Hello everyone and welcome back. The best comic book collection that I have ever seen has officially sold. Many of you that are watching this video have seen that previous video. It has had over 100,000 views on my channel and is by far the biggest video that I've ever had the opportunity to make. Recent things have come to light where I met the gentleman again that let me see that collection at a Comic Con recently where I was set up at as a dealer. I didn't know that I was going to see him that day. I didn't know I was going to have that conversation. But I wanted to make this video, this update video, basically talking about how he sold his entire collection. So right off the bat, I want to talk about how that video and him giving me that opportunity to film in there really kind of gave me an opportunity. It was my, my springboard for my channel. So many of you became subscribers, so many of you found me through that video, and I can't thank him enough. I was actually introduced to him by another guy that I had randomly met in a comic book shop digging. Um, shout out Mike. Um, and uh, he was telling me that I needed, I had to go see this guy's collection. And, and I was humming and hawing. I was like, I got to drive an hour, hour and a half to go see this. It pr it's probably not even that great. Little did I know that it would not only be the best collection I've ever seen, but change my life in a lot of ways, giving me a platform, giving me an opportunity to create an audience because of the exposure it, it gave me. I will be forever grateful to Mike and Sean for giving me that opportunity. When I saw him again at this, this Comic-Con, um, he had lost 20 pounds. He he had looked he looked great. He might have even lost more weight than that. He looked great. Like he he looked happy. He looked content. And and I I, I saw him. And as soon as I saw him, I, I I stood up. I wanted to shake his hand. And honestly, I wanted to give him a hug um, because I just have not seen him for over a year and a half since that video was filmed. I told him the first thing I told him was I, I told him thank you, thank you for giving me that opportunity. And I said you look great. What, what, what's, what's going on? And that's when he told me, he said, you know, Daniel, I sold everything. And I, I my jaw hit the floor because I was, I mean, he was so, he was so in it. When I went in his home, he, he had, he had rooms of comics, rooms dedicated to displaying comics, to displaying his passion. His garage was basically a room that was up for sale, long boxes full of stuff. The other, the other uh, basement room was was basically a modern room with all of those barrister bookshelves, all those modern runs, all those books displayed, pushed to the for, pushed to the foreground in that glass. And then upstairs there was a room like a like a guest room dedicated, and it had like Golden Age stuff and like the Disney stuff, like the Scrooge. Uh, Scrooge Duck um, stuff, and then the entire other room was like his Golden Age, um, you know, the the high end Silver Age stuff, the Marvel stuff, the DC stuff, War books, the Spinner Rack, all of that, and it just it was like such a big part of his life. I got to talking to him about it, and one of the some of the big things that he was saying was. He told me that he could only get what he want. He could only get like a couple books a year because he had gotten to the point where what else was there left to collect, and you know to buy some of the, some of the things that he wanted, like Golden Age Batman, other Golden Age books. I mean, he could only afford like one or two of those a year. I mean, it was a huge purchase. And when I had seen him, he was already at that point, which I didn't know. I didn't know that like he had really cut back so much because the things that he was chasing were astronomically high priced. He had told me that he had been going out and like he was piecing a run together. And I can't remember the name of the run. I, I, I want to say it was like the century or I, I can't remember. 
But it was, he said, he was piecing that run together and he was like, what am I doing? Because he, he said he wasn't planning on reading the, the, that run. He wasn't, he didn't really care about that run. He was just collecting it to collect it. And I was like, oh man, like I said that, I bet that was an awakening. I bet that was like a, hey, what am I doing? Because it was just getting to the point, it seemed like for him, where he was just collecting for the sake of collecting. So I asked him about it. I asked him, you know, what what his mental, where was he at mentally with this? Was, was he okay with it? And he looked at me dead in the eye and he says, I am perfectly fine with it. I'm at peace with it. And I was like, damn, like, I mean, just, just cold, not cold, but more like just, just set, satisfied, satisfied, satisfied with the decision he had made. And I mean, I'm just going to talk personally here. I, I don't believe he's married. I don't believe he has any children. He has some relatives. I think there was like a, a nephew or something. And we had kind of talked about this when I was there, and I think I even mentioned it in the video and some of my ramblings after the video, I said, what is your end game with this? And apparently my words uh, struck a nerve or not. Basically, you know, he, he thought about it. He, he took those words into consideration. And I, I don't think that I was the one that pushed him to do this. I just think that he may have thought about things and what his long-term plan with all of this was. And um, he sold it all. So from my understanding, he sold this to a local-ish um, dealer slash comic book shop owner, a very successful owner. This is the guy that let me see the, the million dollar New York Comic Con collection. To my understanding, Sean sold everything to him. Now, I don't know dollar figures. I don't know price. That wasn't my business. When I was, when I was talking to him, honestly, I was like, I want to buy you lunch. Let me buy you something. Can, <laughs> let me do something for you because of how grateful I was for him giving me that opportunity. I wasn't going to ask him, you know, how much did you get? I, 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 it doesn't matter if he got what he got and he's satisfied with it and he's content. That's all, that's all that matters. And I would assume that would be that that's all that matters for you. If you were to do something like this, I know he had done, he had done quite a bit or had done some eBay sales and if, if anybody, if any of you do that, you know, that can get pretty tiresome. It, it gets, you know, you're always shipping out, you're always taking offers, you're always watching the bidding, you're always having to post new items. That can become a full-time job. If, if you just want, if you're wanting out, then I can see um, justification for what he did. Now, the guy that was buying from him I mean, he's got cash money. Like, it was not one of these things where it's like, oh, I'll pay you now some, and then if these sell or consignment or anything. From, from what he was telling me, he brought cash money over and done, sold. And, uh, I mean, that's how you want to do it. I mean, if, 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 you, if you're playing these games, and I, I, I've heard so many of these guys you know, trying to do business with some of these dealers and some of these shop owners and they, they give you the runaround, you know, they, they don't have the money at the time. You want to be dealing with somebody that can pay you for your wares immediately. I mean, that's the whole point of selling it, in my opinion. Looking back on that and reflecting and going up in that, up, up into his home and seeing that collection was... It was incredible, and, and I even mentioned it a little bit in that video. It gave me a little bit of anxiety, and I talked about that, where it was almost it was almost too much. It was almost like there was so much in there. There were so many books, so many expensive 
high value books. It was like it was overwhelming. Like it was it was like hard to to look at everything. I couldn't believe that a comic book collector could get to that level. Like I I guess I mean it makes sense. I mean, but these guys that have done this since I was crapping my diapers, I mean, there are guys that have put the time in. They have put they've they've sold collections. They've rebought collections. They've gotten out of it, got back in or guys that never got out of it. Guys that were buying when the market was completely crashed, buying when nobody was buying and nobody gave a crap. I mean, the real collectors, the guys that have been in this, like that's what it felt like. It felt like somebody that it was it was such a part of their life. Like it felt like I was in there I was looking at a piece of somebody's soul in a way. Um and it's kind of a weird feeling to to see that. And um to know now that it's just it's just sold is it's it's just wild to me. As far as like my collection and I've definitely thought about it. I've made a video about what your end game. You know, I I'm I'm in, I'm I'm still enjoying it. I'm I'm still collecting. I'm I'm still reading. Like I kind of talked to him about that. You know, I was like, "Well, what about the stories you want to read?" And he says, "Well, it's all on uh um, Marvel Unlimited or whatever the the digital service is, and I was like, oh, dude, I you know it's not the same. Like I I don't like reading comics digitally, and he was like, well, it's just it's just all there. It's just so easy, you know. If you want to read a graphic novel or whatever, it's just there. And I'm like, oh man, I get it. I mean, I I definitely get it, but I still get if I didn't have the reading, like if I didn't read my omnibus and my absolutes and my other collected editions, like if I didn't have that. I don't know if I would still be in this hobby as much as I am because the stories and the characters and the just th- th- that feeling when you're reading something incredible and it, it, it that's that's what keeps me in this like looking at the slabs and 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 the hunt I mean that that's like a fleeting thing um, because once you bring the back the book back home that's kind of just it it's it's over like it's it's a trophy on the wall it's a trophy in a short box in the in the closet the stories that's where you're getting the enjoyment that's where you're getting the memories in my opinion and and if he still has an opportunity to do that without having to collect what he's done i mean good for him i just i i'm still enjoying it long term I don't know. I mean, I might fall out of love with it and and be done with it, but I'm not at that point now. It's just, it's too good of a thing in my life for me to be done with it. I enjoy it too much. I enjoy talking about it with you guys. I enjoy being a part of this ecosystem of comic books that I really enjoy. Guys, what is your opinion? What's your end game? Can you believe he sold that collection? Let me know. If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.